So we just saw Vivi release Avengers 1. What a great one to get. Hopefully you got one. But I've been thinking they're almost reaching the end of all of the kind of classic uh, Marvel grails. So what do we do now? Hi everybody, so they just released Avengers 1 last week. Really exciting, great cover, great comic. You know, one of the real grails that people talk about. And so a lot of people have been asking and I've been thinking about, you know, they have released so many great ones. Uh, you know, AF-15, uh, Fantastic Four number one. So what are the ones that are left and what are we going to do when they've released them all? Uh, so it's interesting. I mean, it's fun and exciting that we're here early and we're able to pick up some of these. Um, I do think that if the digital collecting space continues to uh, evolve, explode, etc., they're, they're going to be worth something. Um, additionally, I think that now that we can put comics in the VV-verse, we've, we've heard people tweet and talk about that, that's going to kind of take this to a whole nother level, uh, maybe that we haven't seen before, so that's super exciting. But... What are the potential uh, kind of grails that we have left? And, you know, what do we do after that? Do we do we close her down? You know, what do we do? So the ones I'm thinking that are still uh, tier S, and I could be missing a couple ones, is uh, X-Men number one, uh, Captain America number one, um, depending on, you know, what you like. You know, Hulk 181, which is the first appearance of uh, Wolverine is another big one. Uh, if you're like me, maybe you like uh, Fantastic Four 48, the first appearance of Silver Surfer, or Fantastic Four 49, which is the classic cover first appearance of Galactus. So we still have a couple good ones to go, but I'd say there's not as many as we've got, right? You know, we've got a lot of great ones, like Tales of Suspense 39, first appearance of Iron Man, you know, Thor. We've got all kinds of different uh, great grails on the on the app as it is right now and if you haven't grabbed a comment or whatnot I, I definitely think you should think about it but what do we do after this okay so let's just fast forward it as you know i always like to fast forward and we have you know all these comics on there do they stop releasing comics what do we do what do you know and uh i give it some thought i think from a comic perspective there's always things to chase uh, maybe it's an artist that you love scotty young for example or this guy named jack kirby or um Nicolette Baldari, you know, she has a lot of the exclusive ones. I mean, whatever kind of artists, you could chase all of their particular comics, and that's fun. Another one I've mentioned before is is chasing runs. So maybe you want to get Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 50 or 1 through 100 or X-Men 1 through 50, etc. Um, that's another fun chase to get. Um, and there'll be other runs that I'm sure, or arcs that people want to go after. But the thing that really struck me, I think, um, that I was thinking about is that you know, right now, and I remember, um, and, and once again, I think collecting goes through phases. You're kind of like, oh, I want to get the grails. Um, I might not even necessarily love Thor, but I'm going to grab Thor because that's supposed to be a good one. You know, whatever it might be. But then I think as you kind of evolve as a collector, especially myself, you get into the mode of, I'm just going to collect what I like. And... Um, I think once the grails have been out, we'll see more of that. We already are seeing more of that. And uh, and, and that's really where I kind of oscillate from. I kind of oscillate kind of between, you know, collecting grails, collecting runs, you know, looking at spec comics. We saw some of that um, with the uh, Taylor Swift comic. So you can see how if you can speculate on something, you could perhaps flip it and make some money there. That's a big part of collecting, as we know. Mm -hmm. Once you kind of reach this one point where I, you know, personally kind of went beyond just collecting these different things, then it was just a lot of stuff that just I like. And that's one of my favorite parts about collecting is it's such a personal thing. It doesn't matter. Nobody is telling you what you should collect. And, uh, and so I'll show you some of the stuff that, that I, um, that I have collected and mean is meaningful to me, um, and probably is meaning, not meaningful to you. It's kind of the classic, you know, one person's trash is another person's treasure. So, uh, definitely show you some stuff. So as a kid and I knew, and, uh, um, people who watch the channel know that I started playing Dungeons and Dragons very young and back then, you know, a long time ago, uh, there was no, um, you know, there is no internet, computers, etc. And so getting together, you know, rolling some dice, having fun, that was always great. So I 
you know, as I've gotten older, I went back and picked up all of these original books. So these are, you know, the original Dungeons and Dragons books. There's actually a box set before these, but these were kind of considered some of the original ones. Um, and I remember them well as a kid. So that was the player's handbook. This is the monster manual. Um, and this is the infamous uh, Dungeon Master's Guide. So trying to hunt these down and get near mint versions of these books. It's pretty difficult because most of the people uh, played and used the books while they were playing. So they're really, really beat up. And obviously these books are from the 1970s. So they're difficult to find. So... This particular one uh, I had uh, as a kid, and um, this one uh, goes through all of the different gods for Dungeons and Dragons and whatnot. But there was this kind of rumor that the first edition of it had different gods, uh, like the Cthulhu gods and other things that they lost the copyright to, and they quickly went to a second version. And it was always this rumor. You never knew if it was true. Of course, there's no internet or anything like that that you could check. And so that had always been a chase of mine to find out if it actually was a real rumor or whether or not it actually existed and if you could buy it. And so that this cop here actually is one of those very first versions that does have all of these uh, gods that didn't exist in any of the other versions. So um, that's the type of thing where, once again, most people, that's a small element, uh, but I remember it as a child being um, kind of this mystical thing that, oh, I'm, I wonder if anybody has this version of the book. And we used to, when we would go to different various gaming shops and they had this book used, we would always go and look and page through it to see if there were these kind of secret gods that no one else, uh, you know. And, and actually, I, I thought it was a rumor that didn't exist, but of course it does. Um, there are other things like that in the world. Um, you might know there's the infamous uh, Secret Wars comic that has different colored Galactuses. That they had a misprint um, and some of the things. And are they, is that a rumor? Is that real? Uh, that one actually is real. But uh, And then some of the other ones, you know, there's you know infamous covers of comics that were misprinted that have black versions and other things. And those are always fun ones to chase. So I think it's there's within every collecting world, there's these kind of oddities that you hear about and then you kind of might want to chase after that. Now, in the VV world, because it's a digital world, um, I think that hasn't yet happened yet. Um, we do have kind of oddities. If you remember, there was this one time where they had a comic, and when you opened it, it was actually a different comic. It was like an error, but they fixed it. And so, and I do think there's some contractual obligations that they've mentioned, that if there's errors, they have to go back and fix those type of things. But I think there will be potentially oddities and licensings and other things that come about that create these kind of uh, weird versions of things um, as time goes on. And those will be things we remember because we're here very early, but for other people, they'll chase them. And we'll be able to talk about that. That's exciting. I believe that after we see a lot of the grails and other things, and it's not necessarily about quote unquote people telling you like, this is really valuable. And then you're as a collector just kind of following what other people tell you it's more of i'm going to do what i want to do i'm going to follow and collect what i want to collect so that's what i kind of see as the future for a lot of people as they kind of evolve through this digital space i'm excited to w do it myself and i'm excited for to watch other people do it as well but tell me some of the stuff in the comments below that you think you want to chase stuff that you anticipate coming or stuff that you're saving you know saving up money to try to grab let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to y'all soon.